Cat. It's Maximus here, this time with a review of the Porter Cable 7514 half inch drive, just compact pistol grip drill, 5.2 amps, 750 RPM against a triple gear transmission or triple reduction. Does have a provision for the side handle, at least this is the one that came with it. One screw hole on the side of the left hand side of the gearbox and not on the right. So this is just more of a basic uh, but reasonable performance. Half inch drive drill. They did modernize these. They modernized these. Um, gave them bigger motors later on in the 90s. I think this unit came out in the late 80s uh, and was valid through the early 90s. Found the part sheet and the copyright date was 1993. Definitely know that it's one of the, I guess we call peak Porter Cable era because of the body design, but we know it's an earlier one. I do have to do some repair on this. It does have a Jacobs 33BA chuck. Later versions of these had a different type of chuck on them. Still runs pretty good. I made sure that the spindle wasn't bent. That's probably one of the most common issues I've run besides it, like replacing electrical cords or brushes or maybe bad triggers is oftentimes half inch drills, either they get torqued on with large auger bits or they just get dropped and the spindle's bent. So that's something you do want to try to plug them in if you do find one used, unless it's $6, in which case it's uh, just the Jacob's Chuck by itself would be worth $6 to throw in another drill, especially one of the uh, old 33BA American made ones. But this drill works just fine. The gears sound good. Anyway, I'll do a little tear down and then a, just a small drilling task with a one and a half inch um, spade bit, nothing too serious. And that's what this was intended for. This is general purpose, half inch drill for running auger bits, smaller self-feed bits. This drill might run a two and nine sixteen self-feed bit, but it would be asking a lot for it. And it may or may not. It may actually stall out running a, you know, a self, you know, a 65 millimeter self feed bit that may be asking a bit too much, but that's essentially what this was for is just a small compact to kind of compete with the better Black and Deckers. The Milwaukee uh, Magnum Hole Shooter would probably be one of the, the, the one with the three finger trigger, the primary competition to this. But Porter Cable definitely had a semi tool identity crisis as they were, I believe that was. Uh, the 90s was the era when they were finally sold, and they went through some various design changes. What we'll see here is we have this one, which is all gray, but we can see this is actually a black housing. And this isn't like something somebody spray painted. I mean, the stickers are over the paint. The paint's actually really, really durable. Um, the label's actually on the side of the drill. And so we know that's an earlier one and the telltale of the trigger where we have the reverse switch down here and it has this kind of odd, it is variable speed, but it has a really stiff kind of odd short throw trigger that is actually pretty uncommon in power tools. Very uncommon in the fact that it pivots rather than just moving in and out linearly. And what I mean by Porter Cable having identity issues is after that, they, they went from this to actually casting the motor housing in gray and then moving the labels to the bottom of the tools. This happens to be a uh, drywall screwdriver. And then in the late 90s, now I should also mention that the trigger did change on this to being uh, a linear trigger, kind of a two-figure design with just a really... Um, just like a tiny little match switch style reverse lever there. I should mention that this style still had the actual hex nuts that hold the handle together. So definitely uh, still like seeing that as does this one. And then in the later 90s, they kind of went to their more common style. The trigger changed yet again to being almost a three trigger, two and a half or a three trigger. It's a little easier to press, really was a nice electronic trigger. We can see that the reverse switch now is this upper button that's kind of sits in these recesses. And they got rid of the uh, hex nuts that hold on the handle. And of course now the motor housing is black. So they had this thing where they were black, painted gray, and then they were molded in gray plastic, and then they were molded in black plastic, 
with three different triggers. So makes it just a little bit confusing because the overall design language is basically the same as we can see, but uh, there were quite a bit of changes made. And FYI, this is a 2620 4.5 amp, 1200 RPM, general use carpenter's drill. I am going to put a three-prong cord in. That's all I have, even though it's just a two-prong wire as the wire has been ripped from the end of the cord there. As far as what we're going to take, we'll just take a quick look inside the back of it to uh, see how worn the brushes are. All the screws are the same size except for the upper one, which is longer than Porter Cable kind of does this odd thing where they have this one extra screw. Never really understood that. The only manufacturer who really does that. And this housing probably hasn't come apart in a long time. There we go. Get that apart. Get a little zoom in here. And not a ton going on inside here. The really evidence that this is factory paint is we can see that the paint goes all the way through the entire housing right into the back of it. You can see how they've set up their the swing trigger. Is This is actually a really standard CNH. This is a really standard format uh, variable speed trigger. But what's different is it's flipped upside down. These wires, the reverse switch wires and the... Uh, all the the wires that end up going to the motor are usually up on top, but this one has been mounted upside down. We can see this uh, cord retention clip actually has another little spring clip to kind of hold it tight. There's our linear trigger, and so when you press the trigger, it just actuates on what it would be a, a standard um, switch mechanism. This is the little variable speed circuits. It's external, so it is a slightly better... Uh, switch really cheap ones that circuit's just inside so this just allows it to have a bit extra cooling good conductivity we can see that they use a screw so the motor the wires are actually screwed down to the terminal that operates the that the brush is connected to we can see that that is a soldered the spring the brush has a little wire and it's all soldered for extra conductivity these are just not the easiest to really swap brushes on because one that's a little bit proprietary even though you can uh, cut the old brush off, still use the top cap and just not have a soldered wire. It, it's pretty minimal but it is finicky because you have to kind of loosen up the other side of the drill motor housing, get a little bit of extra space. That way you can get better access to this, to this screw which is definitely pretty tight which is good news. And uh, there you can see there's a fair amount of wear on that commutator. So this drill definitely, uh, somebody was trying to get their money's worth out of it. And pull that wire off and let's see if we can't Well, that, there's another little plastic tab, so this is kind of the annoying part. You have to remove the two brush guide retention screws, so you actually have to remove three screws. I guess it's really well secured. And the whole purpose of going through this hassle, here's a little plastic spacer bracket that wants to fall off. Don't lose that thing. This is just a hassle, and you can see here, so that brush is actually pretty short. It's actually pretty darn worn. And uh, I'm going to see if I can't find any more that are in my collection. If not, I'll just have to continue to use that one. Well, I just didn't have any that... These are pretty proprietary. I didn't have any that would be a real good kind of swap or replacement. But when we put this all together, we can see here that that part of the wire, the reason that they have the copper wires to increase conductivity, the, it also provides a secondary benefit, which is when the brush reaches the end of its life, that wire prevents it from extending too far. And so you don't have an issue where the brush really grinds away and then like the spring impacts the commutator. So it's known as auto stop brushes. And so I'll just have to continue to use this one. It's not like I'm going to put a ton of hours on this drill I have. A variety of half-inch drills, that's for sure. 
quick side note when you do disassemble this since it does use nuts they want to fall out and so make sure not to lose them anyway well let's take a look at the gearbox next all the gearbox screws are the same size now one thing that is interesting and I should have pulled out the brushes but this also indicates its age see those are fine thread machine thread screws those aren't meant for pl plastic this being one of the old ones with the special type of trigger has actually brass inserts that are in molded into the motor housing and that was the first thing that they changed when they went to the newer uh, uh, the newer trigger design was that it's just uh, deep thread plastic screws that's thread into the plastic and so that was also technically a downgrade because this older one uses metal inserts into the motor housing pull this apart now porter cable uses this hollow dowel pin which just slides into a slightly larger hole there the point to that dowel pin is that it maintains gearbox alignment so that when you take it apart and you put it back together the gears are exactly the same angle one of the big issues with gear wear and, and uh, a lot of drills many do it seems to be about 50 50 depending on the brand um but it's a big deal because if you have this motor housing get twisted a little bit it can cause these gears to canter and it can really accelerate wear because what you have is you have a concentration of pressure on just one point of the gear and then it starts wearing and then that high pressure point just travels across the surface of the gear so having it be aligned and having the rotation be exact means that when you put it back together the gears are all aligned absolutely flat so the pressure is even across the entire surface of the gear and dramatically can increase lifespan um it's really surprising we have a little washer for this gear which is just what they're using this is just a thrust washer what we can see is that the motor spindle and the first stage is helical cut and then it's straight cut on the other two stages which is really it's just fine the highest speed and where the i guess the motor spindle um they do helical just to reduce once again reduce noise helical cuts also a little bit stronger although there's a slight sliding motion and then on the, uh, the lower speed uh reduction gears they decide they didn't really need to have um helical cotton this is like pretty much a porter cable standard so there's and it's called triple to reduction because reduction one from the motor reduction two between these two gears and reduction three from the final drive gear to the spindle itself of course this being a porter cable it is all ball and needle bearing we do have a fair amount of grease in there i'm going to refresh that a little bit and get this back together put a new cord end on it and do a little test run for y'all super quick note because i've run into this issue on porter cables um and it's particularly them is the angle since this motor is normally spinning this way what it's doing is it's grabbing this gear and trying to pull it backwards since there's a slight screw thread on the helical gear that's why there's the thrust washer on there but this little thing here is called a grease slinger because if you put too much grease <laughs> trying to say too many things at once one you can put a lot of grease you can fill this thing halfway up anybody who's taken apart uh, milwaukee drills and tools knows how much grease can be put in tools milwaukee's like one of the only manufacturers who really loads up their tools with grease helps them last longer look at this we can see our evidence of rockwell see there's the rockwell logo so this was uh may have been still in from the era that Rockwell owned Porter Cable, but it's kind of neat to see that Rockwell logo. Anyway, if you put too much grease, it will build up here. And on these Porter Cables, even though it has this little cardboard thing, so if the threads kind of start pulling grease towards the motor spindle, it's supposed to hit this thing and spin it out. Um, it doesn't work the best. And so I've re-greased, I have several Porter Cable drills, I've re-greased them, put too much grease on them, and as soon as you pull the trigger, it pulls a bunch of grease in there, it packs it in, it gets past the bearing, and then flies out, and you get this entire fan of grease 
and it only lasts for a couple seconds until it reduces the pressure. But nonetheless, you re-grease it, you kind of hold it or go to use it. As soon as you pull the trigger, it just whips out a huge amount of grease, 360 degrees from the ventilation. It's a real special experience, so I wanted to warn you about that. And I may be incorrect, actually. I think what it is is that Rockwell sold their portable power tool division to Porter Cable, and that's where... And that included the factory and the moldings and that kind of stuff. So that's maybe where the Rockwell logo came from. Just wanted to be more accurate about that. So just do my usual one and a half inch dull. This thing is really getting dull. I'm going to have to put a lot of force on it. So it's not going to be the easiest thing on the drill. It should have no problems doing this. But this would be common factory. Inch and a half spade bit. Can be difficult for a lot of uh, 3 8 inch drills. And on this one, 750 RPM, pretty good RP, pretty good speed for 5.2 amps. I really need to sharpen this thing. I'm putting a huge amount of weight on it. As you can tell, it's not an issue for this drill. Pretty good motor, actually surprisingly torquey. And certainly a lot better performance than your homeowner's grade 3.5 amp 600 RPM drills. This really delivers, to tell you the truth. And I think a lot of people who would have owned one of these would have been pretty satisfied with the performance. Wouldn't have been some beast like a big D handle or spade handle drill or a whole hog, but for just a general purpose pistol grip half inch drill, it really offers a nice combination of power, torque, speed, and really a pretty good uh, build quality, all ball and needle bearing. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody's been watching and subscribing, and if you haven't subscribed, please do. Till next time, Caddis Maximus out.